There was a gold discovery in 1961 that completely reshaped geology as we know it. For centuries, prospectors and geologists believed that gold had one defining characteristic. It could be seen. From the brilliant nuggets panned from Victorian rivers, to the shining veins embedded in quartz, gold's presence was always obvious. But in 1961, an unassuming stretch of sedimentary rock in Nevada defied everything we thought we knew. This was the discovery of the Carlin-type gold deposit. A revelation that forced geologists to rethink how and where gold could form, forever changing the way the world searches for its most coveted metal. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. The Carlin Trend, a 60 km long stretch of rock in north central Nevada, would have been passed over by early prospectors. To the untrained eye, there was nothing spectacular about it. No shimmering veins of quartz, no visible gold flakes, and yet, deep within these seemingly barren rocks, an enormous amount of gold lay hidden. It was the Newmont Mining Corporation geologists, John Livermore and Alan Coop, who made the discovery. Drawing on emerging geochemical techniques, they detected unusual arsenic and mercury anomalies in the area, chemical signals that hinted at the presence of gold. When exploratory drilling began, they found something completely unexpected. A massive gold deposit with no visible gold. The metal was there, but it was locked inside the lattice of Arsenian pyrite, invisible to the naked eye. This discovery sent shockwaves through the mining industry. If gold could exist in such vast quantities without being seen, how many other deposits have been overlooked? The Carlin mine opened in 1965, and almost overnight, the paradigm of gold exploration shifted. No longer could geologists rely on their eyes alone. Instead, they needed to embrace chemistry, mineralogy, and advanced extraction techniques. The Carlin type deposit shattered long-held beliefs about gold's geological preferences. Traditionally, gold was found in orogenic deposits, where high-pressure geological forces drove molten fluids into faults and fractures, forming high-grade gold veins. These deposits were rich in quartz, often forming spectacular veins that guided miners to wealth. But the Carlin-type system was different. There were no quartz veins, no free gold, just fine microscopic gold disseminated within carbonate rocks. This is what the rock that hosts the gold looks like. To the naked eye, it's nothing special. But the gold is bound in sulphides, requiring sophisticated roasting or pressure oxidation techniques for extraction. The host rocks were Paleozoic limestones and shales, deposited in ancient seas over hundreds of millions of years ago. The story of their transformation into one of the world's richest gold deposits is a tale of tectonic upheaval, hydrothermal processes, and deep geological forces at play. The formation of Carlin-type deposits is closely linked to specific geological settings and processes. During the Eocene Epoch, approximately 34 to 56 million years ago, the area now known as Nevada experienced significant crustal extension leading to the development of a back arc basin environment. This tectonic activity created deep fractures and fault systems, which served as conduits for hydrothermal fluids, hot mineral-rich solutions originating from deep within the Earth's crust. As these fluids ascended, they interacted with the existing sedimentary rock layers. The host rocks, primarily composed of carbonate minerals like limestone, underwent chemical reactions with the invading fluids, leading to the alteration of original minerals and the precipitation of gold and other elements. Notably, this mineralization process occurred without significant volcanic activity, indicating that the gold deposits formed without the direct influence of magma. The unique characteristics of Carlin-type deposits have necessitated the development of specialized exploration and extraction techniques. The microscopic nature of the gold requires advanced analytical methods for detection and recovery, as traditional panning or visual identification methods are ineffective. Geochemical prospecting, focusing on pathfinder elements such as arsenic, antimony, mercury and thallium, 
has become essential in identifying potential deposits. Additionally, metallurgical innovations, including roasting, pressure oxidation, and bioleaching, have been developed to liberate gold from refractory ores, setting new standards for processing low-grade, large tonnage gold deposits worldwide. Refractory ores are those that resist standard extraction methods, such as cyanidation, due to the presence of minerals or compounds that either consume the leaching agents or encapsulate the valuable metals, making them difficult to extract, necessitating the development of other ways to extract the gold from these types of ores. One of the most significant economic impacts of carlin-type deposits is their contribution to gold production in Nevada. These deposits have transformed the state into a leading gold producer, with Nevada accounting for a substantial portion of US gold output. The large, disseminated nature of carlin-type deposits allows for bulk mining techniques, which, combined with advancements in extraction technologies, have made it economically feasible to process low-grade ores on a massive scale. The mining methods employed in carlin-type deposits have evolved to maximize efficiency and profitability. Open pit mining is commonly used when the ore bodies are near the surface, allowing for the removal of large volumes of overburden to access the gold-bearing material. In cases where mineralization extends to greater depths, underground mining methods such as cut and fill and long hole stoping are utilized. Carlin type gold deposits are typically characterized by their low grade gold content, averaging around 2 to 4 grams per tonne of ore. Despite this modest grade, the large tonnage of these deposits makes them economically significant. With that being said, some mines actually get pretty high grades from their ore. For instance, the Deep Star deposit within Nevada's Carlin Trend contains approximately 44.42 metric tons of gold with an average grade of 34.5 grams per tonne of crushed ore. This is an incredible number. Another example of a high-grade mine is the Mikol mine, which boasts an average grade of 18.5 grams per tonne of crushed ore. The impact of Carlin-type deposits extended far beyond Nevada, influencing gold exploration and mining strategies on a global scale. Similar sediment-hosted, disseminated gold systems were soon identified in China, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and Canada, with geologists supplying lessons learned from Carlin to new regions. The recognition of these deposits transformed the global gold industry, ensuring a steady supply of gold from previously overlooked terrains and shifting the focus from high-grade vein deposits to bulk tonnage low-grade systems. Exploration for similar Carlin type or Carlin style deposits is underway in Australia but no deposit has yet to have been found. That may change in the future though, as more ground is covered. And thus, from an overlooked patch of rock in 1961, to one of the most important geological discoveries of all time, Carlin-type gold deposits changed everything. They reshaped exploration, transformed mining technology, and unlocked trillions of dollars in gold resources worldwide. Today, Nevada remains the world's leading producer of Carlin-type gold, and deposits with similar characteristics continue to be discovered. The Carlin discovery proved that gold exists in places no one thought to look, hidden in the molecular embrace of pyrite, locked within limestone, waiting for those with the knowledge to find it. This was not just a gold discovery, it was a revelation, a moment where the very nature of economic geology evolved. The invisible became visible, the impossible became reality, and geology was forever changed. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.